Hi, I'm Andy from the If Community Support Team, and today we're going to take a quick look at using filter code in our applets. Now, for those of you that don't know, filter code is a pro feature based off of JavaScript, and it allows us to customize our applets just that bit more. In fact, it's one of my favorite features of the pro subscription, so let's jump in and create an applet with it. Now, first off, you can see I've already set up the trigger and the action for my applet, the if and the then, if you will. Um, now, of course, these can be anything you'd like, but I'm using the button press trigger because it's really quick and easy to trigger, and I'm using the email action because it's really quick and easy to check, both of which are great things if you're experimenting with filter code or new functions. So, I'm going to click here to add filter code to this applet, and this is going to open up the filter code editor. Now, a great beginner use case for filter code is using it to skip actions based on the time. Um, so let's give that a whirl. I'm going to start out by defining a variable called current hour, which I'm going to use to check the time with later. And I'm going to set that to meta.currentUserTime.hour with some parentheses. And you're probably wondering where I got that from. Now, if you scroll down underneath the editor here, you'll see a bunch of predefined variables and methods. And all of these variable and methods come from your triggers, queries, and actions, as well as a few that are available for all applets, such as meta current user time. Now, this is a moment.js object, which I can tell by hovering over the text in the editor. And that means that I can call the moment.js hour method on it to return the hour. So what that's doing is it's taking my time, the current time of the user, and it's getting the hour from that time. So whenever we run this filter code, the variable we define in current hour will always be the hour where I am. Okay, so now we're going to add an if block, which is how we're going to check our variable against, the condition, uh, against some conditions. And this if block is going to take the following structure. If, and then some brackets, and inside those brackets, we're going to put a condition we want to check. And then we're going to have some curly brackets, and inside the curly brackets, we're going to put the code we want to execute if the condition evaluates as true. See why they call it an if statement now, right? So let's get started adding that condition. I want to skip this output sending me an email if it's earlier than 9 a.m. So that's if current hour is less than nine. And then or, which is what the two pipes here mean, uh, if it is later than 11 p.m. or greater than 23 hours, if the current hour is greater than 23. So because of the or, um, this is going to evaluate as true if either of those two conditions are met. Uh, you can also use and if you want to set a condition where both are true. Um, so if you want to want the code block to execute if it's later than 9 a.m. and earlier than 11 p.m. and only if those two conditions are true, uh, you'd use that. Uh, you'd use and instead of or, for example. And again, you can read more about that at W3Schools. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to add some code into the code block and. Here is where I'm going to tell it to skip sending me an email if the conditional evaluates as true. So in there, I'm going to add email.semianemail.skip. Um, we're going to add two brackets because this is a function and it doesn't take anything uh, in with that. And we're going to add a semicolon to finish the line. And we're done. So we're going to save the filter code and run our applet. Um, and we've just made an applet using filter code. How about that?